Hello and welcome to Caesar's Snack Sandwich. Today I have a quick video for you on Ambient. Now Ambient came across my desk somehow. I saw it on Twitter somewhere about getting a grant maybe for Mantle or Scroll or something. I, I can't remember. Anyhow, so they, they've got some grant or something, but let's talk about what is this. It's basically a DEX. It's an AMM where you can provide liquidity. You can go there, swap tokens, spot tokens, and so forth. Um, but there are some cool tech here. There is some cool ideas, and uh, I do have a flow chart for you to explain it to you. But as always, I will suggest you to come and read the docs yourself. I've read all of these. It was a pretty quick read. As you can see, the the pages are not too, it's not too text intensive. It's not a very hard thing to read. So you could probably read this entire docs yourself in the time, maybe twice the time it would take you to watch my video. So I would suggest you to read it. Uh, there are some things in here that are kind of uh, a little bit, uh, a little bit hard. Uh, that's something I, I wasn't able to find, and that is like whether or not the actual ambient team has an, a fee on top of the fee, whether they're taking any of the fee. I don't see any mention in here about tokens or like a, a governance token or any kind of like fee sharing mechanics or anything like that in here. So this is something you're going to have to dig a little bit deeper if you want to use this protocol and, and take advantage of it. I'm just going to explain to you how does the how do these concepts work uh, with my flowchart. OK, so let's swing over to that flowchart and let's get this done. OK, so here we are on the flowchart. We have Dollar Bill. He wants to provide liquidity to ETH USDC and he comes to Ambient to do so. OK, so the first thing that uh, Ambient uh, boasters is that uh, it uses a single contract to hold all of the tokens. OK, so he's going to deposit his tokens into this Ambient contract. OK, now the reason why they do this is because it, it creates for a much better experience for trading. It reduces gas. All of the tokens are in a single contract. So as you see, he's deposited uh, USDC and uh, ETH. And there's this contract is also holding DAI in ETH. And, and all of the other tokens are inside here. Now, to kind of understand why this is... Uh, why this is uh, beneficial. I have a uh, boosted bill here who is the spot trader. He wants to speculate on these tokens. So let's take a look at the two, the two uh, possibilities here. So T is equal to a transfer and A is equal to accounting. Now transfer is where a token is actually sent from one address to another address. And then obviously with a transfer function, there is also accounting functions inside there because they have to change the numbers, right? So if you look at a Uniswap thing in a multi-hop, let's say uh, Boosted Bill, he has some DAI and he wants to trade it for some USDC, but inside the, this DEX, or let's say inside these both of these desks, there is no pool for DAI USDC. So what does the multi-hop have to do is it transfers the token from Boosted Bill to the DEX, right? To the, so he sends the DAI transfer, and then the numbers get changed between DAI and ETH, and then it transfers that ETH to another liquidity pool, and then the numbers get changed between ETH and USDC, and then it transfers Boosted Bill his USDC. So as you can see, there are three transfers, and... I guess you would call it five accounts, right? So, or one, two accounts, okay? Now, in this case, uh, on, in uh, Ambient's case, they transfer the, the tokens into the bucket here, right? And then it just changes the accounts of, of, of all the tokens and then one more transfer to transfer him US, his USDC. Okay, so now this is not a brand new concept. This is not super novel. This has kind of been around for quite a while, like with a... Uh, where the balancer has a this vault type system and and so forth, so it kind of, it you know there it's not a brand new idea, but I just wanted to make sure you understand that that's why they're using this single contract to hold all of the tokens. Okay, now that again this is assuming that there's no USDC die pool for him to go through either, which there is. Okay, now another cool benefit here is let's say ETH, let's say this ETH token here is some other you know, scammy tax token, right? So instead of actually transferring the, uh, the the tax token, so tax tokens usually tax the transfer of that token. So the, the tax function 
the taxation is inside the transfer or the transfer from function for most cases, okay? So in this case, if ETH happened to be a tax token here, then because they're not calling the transfer function, then that tax token doesn't actually get taxed, okay? So that's another kind of simple benefit of this uh, single pool type thing, okay? Now, um, let's another cool thing that they have here is they call this the surplus uh, liquidity, and basically it's kind of like a like a margin account on a centralized exchange or even an account on a centralized exchange, but it's not you know a centralized exchange. It's it's all on chain, right? So what he can do is he can transfer assets right into this account book, and then use this account book to make lots of trades. And then when he feels the need to, he can transfer those assets back to himself. Now, this is uh, also benefit. You can also do this with liquidity. So let's say he, he transfers in USDC and ETH to here, and he uses some of it to provide liquidity and some of it to trade. And then he decides he doesn't want to use like US, uh, USDC ETH anymore. He wants to trade something else or provide liquidity to something else. All this kind of stuff can happen inside this accounting book. And then when he wants to exit, he can kind of withdraw. So it, it actually removes this all, all of these transfer functions while he's like like constantly trading until he wants to like remove his his assets from these uh from the decks from this country uh, this this system okay now let's go to talk a little bit uh, about liquidity provision again so uh, on this dex there are several options for providing liquidity there are actually three but in this first uh, slide here we, we have two options okay they have a what they're called the ambient liquidity which is basically constant product uniswap version 2 and then they also have concentrated liquidity now if you don't know what concentrated liquidity is uh maybe this is not the best video for you but i'll give you a quick little little talk about it and that's basically where you provide liquidity in both tokens to a designated range. Now, the danger of this is if the token price leaves that range, then you become all holding one token and you stop gaining trading fees because your liquidity is not in the price range that is currently being active. So this pool, this, uh, this dollar bill, he gets to choose. Now, oh, do I want it to be a carefree, easy thing? where I just provide that constant liquidity across the entire infinity, or do I want to manage a concentrated liquidity position? Okay, now the reason why like it's they, they boast that it's good enough to still provide infinite liquidity is because they have this like uh, single single pool where and this count abstraction type thing where you don't ha there's not as much transfer functions being called all the time, okay? Like this multi-hop. This no transfer multi hop type stuff. Okay, now moving on, we have uh, the trading fees. Okay, now trading fees have this dynamic trading fee system, and they have an oracle that adjusts the trading fees on those those pairs, okay? And what it does is it looks at Uniswap version three. So if you go to Uniswap version three and you look at the USDC ETH, there's going to be, I think, three different trading fees. There's a 1%, a 0.03% and or 0.3% and maybe something like a 0.01% or something like that. So I, I can't quite remember off the top of my mind, but what it's gonna do is it's gonna monitor those, those three trading fees or those those uh, those different trading fee ranges and see which one is being utilized the most, okay? And in times where there's like a lot of like volatility, then people will trade any of it, right? So you can then, if they find, if this Oracle finds that that you know, higher fee range is being utilized quite a bit, then it's going to change the trading fee of the pool to match that. And now, now this is like a kind of like a, a module upgrade that can kind of be changed. If they decide they find some better way to do this, then they can change, they can swap out this looking at Uniswap with a different Oracle. And that Oracle will change the fees according to that new algorithm that maybe comes along. Okay. Now, just moving on, uh, they also have these things called knockout liquidity. And this is where you provide like uh, a single token 
to a price range. So let's say he is using ETH, right? So he sends some ETH in there and he says, oh, I want the price range of ETH between 1600 and 1900. Now you can kind of think of this like a limit order, okay? But it's actually single-sided liquidity provision to a concentrated liquidity position, okay? So it, he's providing like to some sort of liquidity provision. Now the first thing here is because it is concentrated liquidity the first thing here is that it has to be outside the current price okay you can't you can't put it over top of the current price you could put it directly beside the current price like let's say the current price is 1600 and you put it at 1601 or 1601 cent right so it's got to be outside depending on the size of those ticks i don't know how big those those bins are right now when the price does go into this green box, right, then you he, you start gaining trading fees while it's crabbing around inside that green box. But as it's inside that green box, it's trading back and forth, okay? So you're buying and selling while the price is ranging around inside this green box. But once it leaves the top of your range, then it pulls your liquidity and you no longer are actively providing liquidity. And in this case, it would be USDC sitting in the bucket waiting for you to come and claim it. Okay. So it'll set it aside and be like, yeah, this is no longer active liquidity. A dollar bill has to come and get it. Okay. Um, if he were to pull out uh, his liquidity while the price is in the middle, then he's going to get a little bit of both. It's the same as if he were to close down a concentrated liquidity position while the price was right in the middle. Now, though, there is something that I forgot to add here, and that is like the, the, the trading fees are auto compounding. That like in Uniswap version three, they set your trading fees aside and you have to come and claim them. Whereas here, your trading fees are automatically added to your position. So your position is auto compounding those trading fees, okay? Um, the last thing that I want to talk about is they they have uh, they have a lot of talking here about account abstraction, but one of the aspects that they do talk about is the abstraction of the need for gas. Okay, so they say that like uh, they have some relayers, and today today I've decided to use Ninja Nick, and you can ask him to pay the gas for you, and you send him a small amount of the token. So you can pay in the kind of token that you're using to swap. And you basically pay Ninja Nick in USDC. Ninja Nick will pay the ETH to write it to the blockchain, and the, your swap will get done for you. They do say that inside the docs, they say that if you're using this like surplus liquidity to pay this, it's cheaper. Now I don't. They don't explain why it is. They just say it is. So I'm taking the word for it. So keep that in mind if you are planning on using account like a pay in kind and not hold ETH as your gas, right? You might want to consider using this, uh, this surplus liquidity to do so. Okay, so that's it for today. I hope this has been useful and interesting and thank you so much for watching and goodbye.